Hello again. My name is Matthew Brown. I'm an undiscovered author who self-publishes his ebooks to Kindle, and I'd like to read you a couple small scenes from one of those books today. Uh, the title of the book is The Martian, the Angel, and the Robot, and the three main characters are actually a Martian, an Angel, and a Robot. Outsiders to Earth, each with his own different perspective. Uh, the first scene just includes uh, Fred, the Martian, who is a Martian, but is wearing a human disguise, and he happens to be home alone. <clears throat> Fred really wished that Will or Bob was home. He wasn't sure what to do. He knew there was a number he could dial that would bring the police, but he wasn't sure he remembered it right. Someone was outside. He saw the strangely dressed individual walk right toward their house. Fred hoped he was just passing, but instead he went near the house around the side. Now Fred was a bit small. He was no threat to the average human. He couldn't just let this person walk around the property, though. And then again, he could. He would have, if the stranger hadn't stopped in back of their house. What was he up to? Fred decided to take a deep breath and confront this person. He was just glad he was in his human form. If he had been in his Martian form, he would have had no choice but to stay inside. Who are you? He could hear the panic in his own voice. Huh? I live here. Who are you? Dude, I'm just reading the meter. The meter? The electricity meter? What is the electricity meter? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. What are you doing? I'll call the police. Okay, calm down. I'm just checking to see how much electricity you've used at the house. You understand? Oh, I get it. And suddenly, Fred was happy again. It was another of Earth's novelties. He knew they had to pay for their electricity, and what a concept that was. But he hadn't considered who they paid, or how they knew how much was owed. That tells you how much electricity enters the house? Kind of. You all right now? I'm good. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Can you show me the meter? Uh, the other scene has all three roommates together. Fred the Martian, Bob the Robot, and Will the Angel. Uh, I've chosen to illustrate Will in his human form because I didn't think I was up to the task of illustrating him in his angelic form, the way it's described. Oh, I like the clothes, Will said. It's not that I don't like the clothes, Bob told him. I said that I don't like having to wear clothes. See? Here I am, metal, without a stitch on. Do I look naked, though? No, I look like a robot, Fred said, told him. On Mars, we had to wear skeins. They weren't clothes, exactly, because we had no textiles. Instead, our pods grew a covering for us. It's a different concept, though. Without the environmental protection and interaction of the skeins, a drone like me could not have been part of the colony. I likely could not have survived. Will said, survival is a big part of the clothing here. If it's cold, you wear a lot, and the sun it protects your skin. I don't like the cold, Bob said. I don't feel it when I'm myself. Only when I have my human skin on. What is the advantage to feeling discomfort at the whim of the weather? Fred told him. It's not exactly the fault of humans they developed in this environment. Well, no, but I can complain all the same. Humans complain about the weather. Why can't I? Fair enough, Will said. He loved that phrase, fair enough. That a concept as vague but fundamental as fair could be measured at all was a wonderful human reality. Humans could parcel out vague measurements like enough, not quite, or a little, and they could apply those silly subjective amounts even to ideas like how fair something was. We didn't have weather in my home. I don't mind it, though. It gives me the excuse to wear clothes. Fred muttered, I think you have better taste in clothes than Bob and I do. <laughs> Maybe. I'll admit that I don't like washing them, though. Bob made that strange metal grunt of his, It's your turn this time, whether you like it or not. I know. Will surrendered the argument before it began. There was no point in debate because he had nothing to offer in exchange for a chance to avoid the washing machine. I always worry that I'm going to do it wrong. You haven't done it wrong yet, Fred said. No, but I've heard you can shrink a shirt. I don't know how, but you can, Bob told him. Don't let it worry you too much. Be grateful that humans like automation. There was a time when humans had to wash each item of clothing individually. It must have taken forever, Will said. See? A washing machine is worth the trouble if it keeps you from washing by hand. I don't think I'd even know how to wash by hand. 
Fred giggled again. You didn't know how to use the machine until Bob showed you. Will agreed. You've been a worthy investment so far, Bob. Neither Fred nor I can work machines too well yet. A worthy investment? Bob asked. It's a figure of speech. Huh. I kind of like that one. Economics were different back home, but I do understand money. Really? Fred said. I still don't get how a symbol that's worth nothing is worth so much. I like sticking ugly paper in a machine and getting soda pop instead. <laughs> what does the machine want the money for? Thank you for listening. Uh, there will be a link in the video description that will take you to that ebook, and a second link that will take you to my author's page so you can see all the books I've written.